This is Mises Weekends with your host, Jeff Dice. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again to Mises Weekends. We have a very special guest this weekend, Jake Lindsay, uh, most recently with the uh, free agent with the Buffalo Bills in the NFL, looking for his next NFL gig. And unlike a lot of NFL players, an alumnus of Harvard University, but more importantly for our purposes, a dedicated uh, Austrian economist and someone who's a, a big fan of both Mises and Rothbard. So that's how we came to know a little bit about Jake. With that, welcome, Jake. How you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on. Well, I, I got to get a little background from you. You have to indulge me. Uh, so you're a young guy playing presumably high school football in Ohio, in the Cincinnati mm-hmm. area. Uh, did, did you already have an interest in uh, playing college ball and did you already have an interest in economics? Yeah, my senior year was that's the first uh, first exposure to economics that we had. I really enjoyed the class. It wasn't more, it wasn't a traditional economics class like you would get in um, get in college. He was a a fun teacher, so that was how that started. Uh, and then I I was looking to play football after my junior year. I was getting recruited. I had some offers to um, to play. A full ride, some Ivy League schools that were looking at me. Wow! Uh, so that's how all that all got started. Yeah. Were you thrilled when you ultimately ended up going to Harvard? Yeah, when they came knocking, it, it's tough from from my background to, to turn down a school like Harvard. I mean, from very modest means, and um, when a school like that comes knocking, and uh, you have that type of opportunity to kind of change your whole uh, trajectory in life and um, thanks for your family like that. It was right. a, a great opportunity to, um, to, to take. And I did that. And, you know, I'm here right now, um, uh, playing, trying to play in the NFL and, and trying to make that work. But, you know, if it doesn't work out, I have a, a diploma from Harvard. Well, absolutely. Uh, uh, talk a little bit about playing at Harvard. Do you feel like, or do Harvard players generally feel like, it's difficult to get NFL attention in, in a smaller conference and that they're, uh, they, they have to be twice as good or, or be a dominant Ivy League player to get noticed by the NFL? Yeah, you definitely have to be a dominant Ivy League player. There have been guys in the past few years that have been kind of trailblazers for the rest of us. Uh, I think this preseason we had maybe 12 or 13 graduates uh, that had been on NFL rosters, on their 90-man rosters and training camps. Um, so there's definitely a few guys out there. Uh, some bigger names were Fitzpatrick. Uh, Cal Juszczyk was a few years older than me. He signed a big contract out in San Fran. So mm-hmm. um, there's definitely guys that have made a name for, for Harvard, and they're trying to continue that that tradition and pumping guys out into the league. Well, so we're speaking to you from down here in SEC country in Auburn. Yes. So, but I really like your quote. Uh, you were interviewed by the Harvard Harvard Crimson. I really like your quote about uh, m- being a mere mortal while playing college football. So, sometimes in the SEC, we feel like the the concept of student athlete is a little strained. I mean, let's be honest. Do you, you feel like major college football is out of control to, to an extent that it's become too big, too much money, the the TV contracts? Is it become unhealthy? Um, I personally, I think it's, it's, it's getting very bloated. Um, there's a, so much money involved and there's a lot of give and take between players and universities. And there's now settlements for you know, cost of attendance. Guys are getting, um, not off the books, getting paid to play, but you're get, there's a lot of money involved to the point where it's corrupting a lot of things. And, and yeah, these guys are, I think coming out with very big egos and yeah. uh, you're losing sight of the education um, where, you know, you go to play football, but you got to prepare yourself if that doesn't work out as well. So you're kind of setting these guys up to to have a tough time transitioning out of it. Well, and, and I don't want to get you in, in trouble with any of your potential future employers, but, you know, there is, a lot of the uh, major college programs are state universities, Taxpayer mm-hmm. funded. I understand that football brings in revenue, but they are state funded. Uh, and the NFL doesn't have to pay for its own farm system, in effect. In other words, uh, these young men are, are putting their bodies on the line. They're, they're playing, uh, you know, they're, I'm sure there's steroid use in major college football. 
Uh, they, they can be injured. They're, a lot of them are not uh, getting a particularly solid education, whether that, that's their fault or not. But the, the kind of dirty little secret here is that the NFL owners have this free farm system. Yeah, I don't know how long the system will last the way it is. Um, it seems like there are a lot of cracks in the foundation. Um, but as long as people keep going to games and keep paying for it, I think uh, it's going to continue. But with state education and state funding, um, how the Internet is affecting college mm-hmm. or will affect college, uh, you may see a major restructuring of how the system works. Well, so you're at Harvard. It, I can imagine it must have been super rigorous to deal with your studies. You got to learn the, the the defensive scheme or whatever at Harvard. You got to go to class. You got to take tests. Uh, is is the is a Harvard athlete's life very different from an SEC athlete's life? Uh, I can't speak for the SEC athlete. Um, I can't speak for the Harvard athlete. And you know, it's probably not too much different than than the normal athlete. And you have tough weeks during midterms when papers are due. Uh, but in season, you're going to have to schedule around that. Uh, you know that going in, you you have realistically, you know, 30, 35 hours to devote to football, um, which is 15 more than, you know, you're, you're allowed to put in. And that's all voluntary. But um, it's it's definitely difficult to deal with that. And in, more than anything else, it's a very competitive and competitive environment academically. Right. Uh, so you're going up against very, very bright students sure. in the classroom and also you're going up against very competitive athletes on the field um you know skill wise there's there's a wide range obviously there's very good players that come out of the ivy league but um regardless of the level of skill you're going to get 110 percent out of really everyone every day just because of the nature of that that student right. athlete you got highly competitive guys and, and yeah. gals. Now, did you know that you wanted to major in econ, and and how or when did you become exposed to people like Mises and Rothbard? I did going in because you know going in the Ivy Leagues, I was like, you know what, engineering might be a tall task uh, for me to take on with football. And mm-hmm. I was from a business background. Uh, I have a family small business here that I help with in the off season or in the summer times over, over college, but I wanted to go into econ, um, really from the get go. And what triggered it all was the whole Occupy movement. Mm -hmm. Um, so there was a big protest on campus. Uh, they had to shut down the yard, you know, you'd get to use your ID to get through there. Um, so when all that was going on, it was Peter Schiff through Facebook. He went in, to the Occupy Wall Street movement and was interviewing these people. So he really caught my attention there. And from then, I listened to his, um, I think at that time he had a uh, the daily uh, radio right. show. So sometimes Tom Woods would fill in. Right. And from there, it all kind of spiraled. I uh, was involved with following uh, Dr. Paul's presidential campaign in 2012, kind of 2011 into 2012. Um, started reading Lou Rockwell, uh, Mises Daily. I get the emails. I still subscribe and read um, EPJ with Robert Wenzel. So all of these people that are kind of affiliated with the movement um, kind of became part of my daily life. Wow. So um, did you have fairly left-wing professors? Did you have standard like Samuelson textbook for your uh, for your undergrad classes? So the first one was Mankiw. That's okay. the big one. Yeah. Um, he, he wrote, he writes the textbook and comes out with one every year, year and a half, a new one. So, um, that was my first exposure to, I guess, mainstream, uh, economist. I had Larry Summers. He was a, a professor in one of the wow. courses, uh, fine, Feinstein, Feinstein, mm-hmm. uh, Martin, or Martin Feldstein, Martin Feldstein. He taught with Summers in that class. So there are, there are definitely, um, Neo Keynesians, yeah, or uh, yeah, they're definitely not Austrian. I think the closest you would get was Jeffrey Myron, who I think is affiliated with the Cato Institute. He taught mm-hmm. a, a class that was a libertarian approach to economics, but I was reading the syllabus and no Mises or Rothbard, so that was kind of disappointed. Right. But that's still, I mean, what a great op- what a great opportunity for you to have a class with Larry Summers, a Treasury Secretary. I mean, that's the kind of thing you you can't do at University of Cincinnati, let's say. No, no. 
So that that's fantastic. So you were kind of developing Austrian or libertarian uh, I- ideology as you made your way through undergrad. Yeah, that's true. Um, so going you know going through that, it was kind of challenging um, for me to develop as a, an Austrian while being in that environment. So there was kind of a give a little take. Uh, you know, they would throw an idea at me. I would try to go through Mises.org and and read an article on whatever subject we were talking about and, and understand uh, the the Austrian approach to that. So and that was that was how I started developing. You know, I haven't dug into human action or man economy and state yet, but I, I look forward to doing that. Well, in between getting through Harvard and playing football, those. Uh... 900 page books are, are pretty tough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you, you should absolutely, you will, you'll love human action. I'm sure you're a very bright young guy. So you'll love man, economy and state. Um, have you, have you had any chance to uh, proselytize at all with any of your fellow players on the team, uh, it, it, you know, now in the NFL or previously at Harvard? Yeah, I would kind of, freshman year, I was very vocal, but I don't think I was in the you know, the ANCAP libertarian uh, state I am now. So I was kind of known for for popping off with a lot of uh, very politically charged okay. comments. Um, but as we got as I got older, I, I became, came to understand uh, the philosophy a little bit better. And I had, I think, more mature conversations with my peers. And yeah, there were definitely uh, plenty of links sent to Mises.org, uh, Lou Rockwell and... Um, Actually, the other day I was telling a, a, a fellow uh, Harvard Crimson uh, about this interview and I, I sent him the link. So definitely, definitely uh, got the name out. And that's what I've been working to do, um, especially with the with the interview I had with the Bills um, in that little player bio. I, mm-hmm. I, I you know made the mention of Rothbard to hopefully get the word out for Liberty. Well, your typical NFL player uh, is an independent contractor. Uh, mm-hmm. may or may not have a long-term contract. It, it seems like a perfect audience. Um, we've spoken with Glenn Jacobs in the past who, who, who uh, has a character, the professional wrestler Kane, and he talked about his uh, ability to talk to people who are independent contractors who really see all of those taxes, for example, coming out of their paycheck, uh, who really understand labor and capital and other things in, in a more direct way. Um, so, so I, I bet, uh, some of, some of those NFL guys are noticing, uh, th- those estimated tax payments they're sending in are pretty big. Yeah. There had been some conversations in the last few months about guys and taxes and the market and things like that. And I definitely, uh, suspect there's a lot of sympathy towards, um, amongst them towards the Austrian point of view. Right. And they are potentially someone you could have on, on board as you educate them further. Well, so w- what's next for you? Uh, um, the, the NFL is a rough and tough place. Um, it's, it's a pretty merciless place. Is, is this, uh, is, is this what you want to do in life? Yeah, I'd like to take a, a few more months to let everything play out. You know, it's obviously a long season and it's a very violent game. So injuries occur, spots open up on practice squads and you never know what'll happen. But, you know, going forward, you know, I'd, I'd like to continue with this uh, for, you know, a few more months. Uh, it doesn't work out this year then I'm going to sit, sit down with my family and uh, with my agent and try to discuss options. And, you know, if it doesn't look like it's, it's a good idea going forward, I might hang it up. Um, but right now I'm a hundred percent in, and uh, looking to get picked up again. And preferably, uh, would linebacker be your preferred position? Yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, I think I'm a linebacker. Yeah. 100%, yeah. yeah. Now, uh, last question for you. What are, what are some of the kinds of things you might like to do outside of football uh, in, in terms of career? I'd like to get involved in uh, finance, investing, um, potentially real estate. Um, I, I follow, follow the markets and, and things like that. Uh, so those are the, the first things I'd probably delve into and try to gain some experience in. Well, Jake Lindsay, we appreciate your time. We love that you're a member of the Mises Institute. We'll be watching uh, how things go for you in the NFL or otherwise. We wish you all the best, and, and thanks very much. Keep up the good work. Um, ladies and gentlemen, have a great weekend. Subscribe to Mises Weekends via iTunes U, Stitcher, and SoundCloud, or listen on Mises.org and YouTube.